Well, as we as we talked, it is quite a contrast, I guess. Let's go back over the years to the first production on a stage with artificial sets. Tell us about it. Well, you'd say artificial sets, but uh, th those sets were built of a uh, very special kind of planks. That house that was built, that set, it was uh, it was not done with new wood. It was they found old timbers and did it. That way, isn't that right? Don't you yeah, they brought... Uh, uh, why don't we start over again on that? If you could tell us again about right. the work. You're talking about Foxfire, are you? Yeah, we're talking yeah. about Foxfire, the original stage yeah, presentation. Right. I didn't have my microphone on her, so I have to, we have to do that again. <laughs> you have the lava there. <laughs> I know. Okay. Now, about, the, about those original sets. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, they were re they were real as you could be. They, the, all the timbers were brought from that part of the country, and they were old, and they'd been taken down from old cabins that had fallen apart. And that, they, that those all those those uh, all that all that made it look really very solid and real. Of course, we had a painted backdrop instead of the real hills, but. Uh, and then you go out to the real hills. Never what been. did that impart to you in these portrayals? I want to talk a little more about what Jesse was talking about, and I'll get to the hills in a moment. <laughs> um, the, the, uh, we even went so far as to bring up, you know, the, the, the story is laid in Rabin Gap, northern Georgia, and the soil there is very red. So we brought up soil from Georgia to cover the stage and as Jesse said they brought up all the timbers to make the cabin. This sounds like a Belasco uh, approach to naturalism <laughs> here or something. Yeah. Well it was uh, and the backdrop was really most beautifully painted. Um, yes. the, the set was designed by a wonderful designer named David Mitchell. Um, now, I'm talking about the New York production. We had done two productions prior to the New York one, one at the Stratford Festival Theater in Stratford, Ontario, and the second one at the Guthrie Theater in Minneapolis. Now, in the yeah. meantime, had there yeah. been motion picture production companies beckoning for this property or not? No. 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 We thought there would be, but there weren't. Uh -huh. And it took courage to do, because it's a... Uh, um, it's a gentle story uh, it, and a, a rather offbeat one, um, and it was uh, the Hallmark people saw it in a production in Los Angeles, uh, and then came to us and said, "We'd like to acquire the rights to the play, and we would like you and Susan Cooper to." Uh, write the teleplay. Uh, that didn't work out because I was making batteries not included. Uh, so Susan did it on her own and very well, I think. And then uh, uh, and they wanted us to play it. Meanwhile, so, the, name, the name Hallmark Hall of Fame must have had a certain... Oh yes, that's, that's quality. We knew that. <laughs> yes. So going into it, you had a certain name recognition already there? We yeah. knew that, that if Hallmark did it, it, it would be done with Pro the, 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 properly. It, properly and it would not be uh, gussied up, if you understand that expression, <laughs> to, to suit a, an audience that it would be wrong for this for this play. That's the way Annie would say it, isn't it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> yes, <sir>, probably. <laughs> Meanwhile, they take the production out to Carolina. Tell us about working in a real location now as opposed to the stage. Whoever wants to go first. Well, it made a vast difference. You know, you can't confuse something for the theater with something done for television or done for film. Um, it's a different medium. You're so dependent on the visual image. Uh, the camera catches things which you can't even see in a theater. Um, actually, the illusion that we got in the theater was, I think, quite extraordinary. I'm back talking about the set again. Because while they painted the backdrop, a vast backdrop covered the whole back of the theater, and including certain trees in front of it, and then the backdrop is scrimmed. That means there are a series of gauzes, 
and the effect from sitting out front in the audience is you get an enormous sense of depth. So it was very real. But of course, when you got to Carolina, there was the real thing. And it was early and spring, I, mean, I understand. A bit chilly, perhaps? Uh, yeah, it, it was, was rather pleasant, actually. It was pleasant. Just early in the morning, it would be very chilly, yes, but during, as soon as it warmed up, round about 10 o'clock. Was, we had timed the production so that the uh, apple orchard would be in full bloom, we thought. <laughs> and when they found the right cabin and had made certain changes to it, we shot down at the cabin and just below the cabin there were two lovely apple trees and they came into glorious bloom quite early and we thought oh isn't that marvelous because in two weeks we move up the hill oh I suppose another five or six hundred feet but that makes a difference in terms of the temperatures so the trees up there theoretically were going to bloom later what nobody realized was that those trees up in the orchard were very old, and had not been well tended, not <laughs> been properly pruned, and when the time came for us to move, there were no blossoms. So... Don't tell, don't tell. That's why oh, yeah, they talk tell. about the advantages of working on a stage. <laughs> well, we sent... No, I'm going to tell. Oh, That's right. We sent to sent to uh, California and got thousands of silk apple blossoms and had to tie them on the trees to give you that uh, orchard in full bloom. Shades of Joseph on Sternberg. Here, <laughs> yes. you know. How many years now have you been playing Hector and Annie? Well, we uh, played it the first time. All the time. I mean, we don't, we don't, we've done a lot of things in between Indeed. production. But well, the first one was what? I think 78. 78. And over that time, you must have heard from a lot of people who knew a Hector and an Annie oh, yes. in their own family. Indeed, people are always coming and saying, you remind me of my grandmother. <laughs> but you know, you were talking about the differences between uh, stage and film. I think you lose some things when you turn, go to film, because somehow it's not as concentrated. And you gain some things, I mean, but it's two different, two different things. Meanwhile, you will be watching, that is to say, a lot of viewers will be watching you who never have seen Foxfire. That's right. the, the wonder of TV for the first time. Yeah. Now, you've had a lot of time to think about Foxfire. What would you like to tell them at this time as they go into this show, many of them for the first time? Enjoy yourselves. Sure. I hope that it reminds them of their roots. And uh, I hope that they have something to take away with them after the show is over. I, 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 when Susan and I were writing the play, we kept talking about the story being affirmative. And I think it is. Um, it's uh, about people of great character. Um, it's a reflection of a culture which threatens to disappear. I mean, the, you know, the, the play was drawn on material from the Foxfire books, and the man who inspired that whole undertaking is an extraordinary man named Elliot Wigington. Uh, he's a teacher in a high school in Raven Gap, and he felt he was not uh, achieving what he wanted to do with his students, and he had the idea that he would get them <coughs> Uh, a couple of tape recorders and uh, scrounge a couple of cameras and send them up into the mountains to talk to their uncles and aunts and grandparents and cousins and so on about how it was in the old days. And then he got out, I think, a little two-page mimeographed sheet uh, sort of school paper, which was called Foxfire. You've, you've and that, both met him, I assume. Oh, oh we've yeah. met him, oh, and we yeah. met him and became good friends, and they were marvelous with us. It was um, the first, uh, we had to go down to acquire the rights. See, there, at that time, when we started, there were three Foxfire books. There are now nine, and they've sold about seven million copies. Uh, and they are <clears throat> based on oral histories. 
histories that the kids took from these interviews. And the school, the Foxfire School, and uh, now the foundation, as run by Wigington, is very democratic. It, the kids have an enormous amount to say, and we had to pass muster with them to get permission. <laughs> Which includes access uh, and things like that, too, I suppose. Well, well I, I, I don't know to what thing. degree they were concerned about that element, but they were concerned that we not write Lil Abner, yeah. or, you know, and that this not turn out to be dog patch. Which Holly uh, says to John Denver. Right, sure. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, We're going to have to close this out, I'm afraid, for uh, lack of time. But in conclusion, I am so happy to see my favorite line, and it's your line, remaining in this adaptation about a little daylight between the ribs. <laughs> Could I hear you say that just once? <laughs> you, you know the one I mean? Yes, nothing I like know the line you mean. There's nothing like daylight between the ribs to clear a man's mind. Indeed. But that would not be clear to an audience hearing it unless they understood that it came from a ghost. <laughs> Man, it was... I want to thank the two of you so much for talking with us and for your work on stage and screen. Oh, Foxfire, I don't know. <laughs> Have you lost You track? know, one time I'm going <laughs> to... It's a kind of an immortality. Not, I mean, I'm sure there's, those people who even tell their children how it was. So there's a sort of wonderful continuity. Well, look, at, look at Annie's reaction to the two silhouettes oh, pinned yeah. up on the wall. Where did that come from? Was that in there from the inception, the silhouette thing? Mm -hmm. That's a, such a charming... Okay. And, it, that's uh, where we live. That was, that's in Westchester, in New York State. Nothing to do with Appalachia at all. But uh, the, the, the minister of the church, Richard Monkman, always had a moment or two in the service when he brought the children